one two one two welcome welcome to the revolution of one live stream this is tk coleman every tuesday every wednesday every thursday unless i say otherwise 12 p.m eastern time we're coming at you live right here on twitter and periscope and we're going to be talking about on tk's two cents that's the day where i take a couple of tweets take you beyond 280 characters or however many twitter gives you and philosophize a little bit about the top tweets from the week. And then on Wednesdays, the revolution will be live stream. It's Kamau and I, usually with a special guest, talking about what's going on, talking about people that are doing cool things in the world. And I'm excited about today's guest today. Um, it's a young man who's doing a lot of interesting things in the world. His name is Roger Casilla. And Roger is the co-founder of Canal Squad, which is a fitness group that's designed to help people connect with other people that's interested in fitness and health and hold themselves accountable to achieving their goals and staying healthy. He's also the co-founder of Perspective Words, which is a website devoted to inspiring people with philosophical ideas that help them overcome the resistance and, and, and become their best selves. And so we're gonna talk about what inspires Roger to do the work that he does, what keeps him motivated every day, and uh, what's happening in his world right now. Roger, man, thanks for joining us. It's an honor, man. Um, when you sent me that message um, through Twitter, I had to look at it twice and close out my Twitter, then go back in there and, and, and read it again. It was just, it was, it was an honor. I've been following you for a while, and I really love the work you're doing and what you're doing in the community, and very inspiring in, in my movements and what I'm doing here in, in in my community. So I greatly appreciate you for having me um, being part of this, which I believe is hey, Roger, great. I'm I'm super interested because uh, the. When I came across you, I run all the Rev1 uh, social media. So I run the Instagram, and I saw you kept popping up again and again, commenting, <laughs> like, on love. Um, so you've been rocking with, with us since the very beginning of this project. But I wanted to know how far back had you been following TK? Like, when did you, when did he kind of first come on your radar? He came on my radar, I think, around 2018, 2000, 2017, 2018. Um, I can't recall exactly when I um, found him, but I know it was through Twitter. And then through Twitter, um, I know he didn't have an IG because I tried to find him on IG um, <laughs> there no times, and I didn't find it. So I was like, okay, so Twitter it is. <laughs> so I kept coming back to Twitter, um, although I don't really get on Twitter as much, but TK was the reason why I, I, I came back and, and just trying to continue to learn and and, and see what 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 he was how he was moving, kind of how he's leading. Well, first of all, I got I got to get get Twitter to give us some kind of kickback, man. If we bring in people on to the site, <laughs> but no, you know, Roger, man, let's talk about let's talk about the work that you're doing, man. T tell us a little bit about Canal Squad. Uh, tell us a little bit about Perspective Words. Give us your background and, and what inspires you to do these things. Okay, um, Canal Squad was um, it started last year around August. 2019 and then um prior to that i've been working out on the canal myself and just with people um since three four years ago it was just like um yeah. through movement for me it kind of really inspires me and, and leaks over to what i do in a daily life creates discipline um just really get my mental health it, when people ask why do i work out and I, physical is, is beyond that it goes to the mental work some of my best thoughts come while i'm moving so as you move, you, it's just like, it goes back to that. It's like, continue to move because that's how you really will move in real life. So through the mind, through the um, the mental and the physical side of things. So Canal Squad got started was um, me and my buddy, um, actually a friend of mine, she came back from college and we was working. Uh, she was like, I wanna work out. I don't know where to work out. I was like, let's hit the Canal Squad. Let's, let's hit the Canal. It was not Squad yet. It was just two people. And then um, she had a great workout and then she said, um, how about if I invite my friends? I was like, that's a good idea, why not? I was like, you know what? How about we open it up for other people to come? And Canal Squads got started. We didn't know what we was going to do. We was just, same workout we did that same day, we did it with um, everyone else. And from there on, it just took off. Um, people just got um, attracted to what we were saying, but also um, the real work we were putting in. Because we're not only leading the class, we're actually putting in the work with you. So, and I think that's really key. And when you're leading any anything um, that is uh, of a group of individuals, it's like, um, you gotta be able to put in the work before you request anyone else to do it. Yeah, man. I, I, I love what you say about first, the, the connection between motivation and physical fitness. You know, uh, a lot of times we kind of treat it like it's just the product of the mind. It's, it's just consuming good content. 
Uh, but what you're saying is the more you practice bringing your body under 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 the restraints of discipline, the, the more you'll have that that inner resolve that you need to get through the challenges of life. T tell me a little bit more about that, man. So for for me, how I got to like, um, so on the, for example, I tell people like, um, there's a, I like the way I started with fitness was in my basement, my, my parents' house. And, and, um, it was like, there's a treadmill and there's a treadmill that's facing the wall. Um, I yeah. would go miles just running, but then for me, I always say I was not looking at a wall. I was seeing things. It was like a TV wasn't there, but I was visualizing, but I was uh, visualizing not only thoughts, but um, the next move, uh, what I've done in the past or what I can do things better. So um, through that, it kind of it, it kind of like, well, I need to put this to work. I need to start writing these things down, these thoughts that come to my head. And and, and that's what I was like, this it, it happens when you're moving. And that's where it first started uh, was running on the treadmill. And, and through that, it was like through um, the weights came in, um, even through weights, it's just like, you think you're focused on what you're doing, you're actually, your mind just goes away and, and goes through this other world to, to, to be honest, to tell you the truth. I don't know how it gets there. It just, I, I think it's through movement. I honestly think it's through the movement. The, as you keep moving, the mind also is working. Um, but it, in this case, your body is too. So you're, you're, you're gaining strength, not only mentally, but physically too. All right. So when did when did you decide that you wanted to move from being this highly motivated person to helping to motivate others? Like like when did you start perspective words and what made you take that step? Uh, so I started writing um, prior to perspective words on my own. I started on Snapchat just because a lot of people don't be on Snapchat and it's only 24 hours. So I was like, oh, let me <laughs> just write um, a leave. And it's like that commitment was like, I'm putting my thoughts out there, but I'm not sure how people are going to take it. So it was like the fear of what people thought. Cause I still like in my mind, I've been writing since high school just because, um, I, I'm dyslexic. So a lot of ways of, for me to, um, uh, understand the world was, um, for me to write it out and me reading it back. Um, there was a lot of situation experiences going through school and that I struggled with that. I didn't think people understood because I never shared it. Then I was like, well, let me start Snapchat. And then through that Snapchat is how I found the co-founder of Perspective Words with me. He was writing, uh, it's a great friend of mine. He knew who I was, I knew who he was. We, we went, uh, he went to a different college, but we, we had mutual friends who would hang out. But he didn't know what I did on the side because I never posted about it until he started following me on Snapchat. He was doing the same yeah. similar thing to that on Twitter. And um, he's like, you make me think you actually challenge these thoughts that, um, that we all have, but we never really go in depth and try to ask the question. We're not as curious. We just listen or see the inspire, inspirational message, but we never put it or apply it to ourselves. So um, yeah. we sat down one day and Perspective Words created, was created from a brunch, a breakfast. He's like, let's start in 2000, um, we started in 2017. He says starting, it was December, 2017. He says, starting 2018, uh, let's create something together. And from that day on, was, um, the the title didn't come the the title didn't come out that same day. It came out the next day. I told him, "How about we call it Perspective Words because we're putting um we're not we're not we're not telling anyone to we're not leading anyone to go this route. We're just trying to provide a perspective of how we see the world and how you can uh, see what works for you and apply it for what works for you. Um, too many times we um, we get to the point of wanting to force people um, this." this message or that not, not we we want to guide you we want you to be able to apply this to your everyday life if it doesn't you know what i mean a lot of people don't connect to the message some do um but again it's just a perspective and uh um and it was through snapchat me on snapchat him on twitter and then we created I, an ig together and we want to keep it with colors i love colors um i like creating um drawing and stuff so that's where the colors came up but the colors uh, signifying perspective words um, is kind of like go deeper into what we're saying. So ask yourself that question, for example, of purpose. Purpose might be highlighted on one of our um, message, but um, you have to relate it back to you. What is your purpose? What it, what are you trying to um, accomplish here on earth? And and those where the color comes in. A lot of people ask us about the colors maybe, um, but yeah, it, that's how perspective words started. And we write every day, Monday through Friday, and we haven't missed a day since 2018. Wow. Wow. Well, for those who are listening, 
and who who want to you know be an influencer or who who just you have some something that you want to create and and you look at people like Roger or or Kamau and I or anybody that you're looking at, people seem so confident, they seem so natural, they seem so gifted. But it's so important to remember that everybody has a starting point and everybody feels a little vulnerable at the starting point. Everybody questions <laughs> themselves a little bit. Am I talking about stuff that people really want to hear? Are people going to think this is stupid? Like, is this really going to work? Do I really want to do this? And I, I love the part of your story where you said, hey, I, I did Snapchat because I knew that that would go away in 24 hours and I didn't know how it would go. And I think it captures this idea that however you start, find the starting point that's small enough to seem feasible for you and, and and just experiment, give it a try and allow yourself to build momentum over time. And and I love to see how far you've come, but I love that you were willing to start small in a way that works for you, you know? Thank you. I love it, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, hey, I, one of the things that I liked that Roger said, you know, oftentimes we, we hear these really inspiring messages. We, you know, we read a good quote that, that, that you know says something to our soul or says something to our subconscious, but taking it a step further is is the biggest challenge, right? I have a wall that's full of post-it notes. I've always been been a quotes kind of guy. I write them on post-it notes and I just document them. I, I mean, literally hundreds and hundreds of post-it notes. <laughs> and sometimes I'll rotate them in and out. You know, if there's a certain season that I'm going through, uh, a lot of quotes, you know, that are related to that season or whatever challenge I'm going to. I'll connect with. But for the most part, you know, just hundreds and hundreds of quotes and never really taking them past uh, quotes, never taking them past a little post-it note that's on, uh, you know, on my window or on my wall. And, and, I, and I love that you took the, these words, these quotes, these things that come from influencers or authors or people who've motivated you. And you said, you know what, I'm not just going to consume them, but I'm going to also help create them. I'm going to, I'm going to bring something to the world that wasn't already there. And, and I'm going to put my own stamp on it. No, you, you got it. I appreciate that. Thank you, man. You know, so one question that, that, that comes at me a lot, cause I, I mean, I, obviously we, we both enjoy sharing a lot of inspirational ideas. You know, people often ask, are you are you are you ever afraid of just putting out the same stuff that other people are are putting out? Uh, you know, everybody's putting out inspirational quotes on Instagram and Twitter and things like that. Um, what is it that makes you use your voice in this direction when there are so many other people that are using their voices in the same way? Why why Roger's voice? Yeah, that's funny. That's a funny question. Well, not funny question. That's a question that I've asked myself and I asked uh, my co-founder, um, Marquise Hayes, by the way. Um, he's a co-founder of Perspective Words, um, a wise guide at a young age. Uh, he's younger than me. And I was like, man, I, I'm, I look up to you, man. He's just really great guy that has this perspective also that's unorthodox. It's like, it's different. Um, but um, we asked this question. It's like, how, how far are we going to be able to do this? Um, how far can we actually write messages? And it's like, you can't look at how far, you can just look at what's today. So each day is like, I is, is, is like we read something, but we all see something different. Maybe that was that, that one quote, but how you see it relates back to you differently because we're all from a different culture. We come from different backgrounds, different cities. So we see things differently. So being able to apply that to yourself is where you're able to re realize the message of what's real to you. Um, so that's where the, 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 the message continues to be written through uh, our perspectives, because, um, although they're the same, we're the same, but different, we see the same, but how we react and how we, um, I guess, socialize in life and, and how we, we communicate with ourselves is different. And then I think that's where uh, the uniqueness come in. So I got a quote that I wrote, um, um, uh, it's, I keep it in my, uh, I actually got it on, uh, painted on my wall. So it says, don't try to be different try to be yourself that leads to it i love it man i love it you, you know one thing I'll, I'll add to that is um i mean you pretty much said it is that we not only see things differently but other people receive us differently and and there are people in the world who they they will only listen to it if it's coming from kamau 
They will only listen to it if it's coming from Roger <laughs> or if it's coming from TK. You know, I'm sure you've experienced this, but I, I've been in situations where I read a book, right? And that book changes my life. And then I try to give it to my friends and get them to read it. And they're not feeling it at all. <laughs> but then those same friends will come to me, yeah. you know, for some yeah. kind of advice or whatever. And then I'll tell them something that's come right out of that book. And I'll be like, oh, that's great. That's great. And it's like, well, you could have got it from that book too. But it's people are, are, are selective with who they choose to hear it from. And so when you use your voice, you expand the pool of people that can hear positive messages because it's somebody out there that's only going to take it if it comes from you, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and there's sometimes so also the way you, you place it, the words you place it in, that people connect yeah. to it um, more to it too. Then it's like, okay, mm -hmm. um, it, it's like I'm in Indianapolis, so um, the way we write, we write daily experiences of what, how we feeling and or what the experiences are we're, we're going through. And so like, there's some things that only in Atlanta that, you know what I mean, only Atlanta can see or how Atlanta uh, community um, go uh, about their day that relates to them. And, and I think that's what um, has helped us in, uh, in, in being able to connect with a lot of more people and out, outside the community too. I love it, man. Yeah, okay, so let me talk about this title. I, I picked this title just for you. The, the, the name of this uh, live stream is I don't want to be a role model. I want to be a real model. Now, I, I, I was inspired by going through your Instagram before the show started. Uh, does that sound familiar? Do, do you know where I got that from? You got it from Tupac. It was a video I posted about Tupac, which is a very inspirational person as in my life has been. Tell me what Tupac means to you and, and, and talk, talk to me about that phrase. Tupac was not that was not a role model he made it clear he wasn't but he was um, a human being and that's what a lot of people like um gets i guess confused it's like yeah you're in tv and you're supposed to be so and so and so and this and this they create these filters for you so he made it clear it's like i'm still human i'm still dynamic i'm still complex i feel just like you feel some days are good some days are bad and that in the, in the sense is creates you to be be yourself rather than playing this character every time, which is a role model, a role model. You're playing a role as a model, not a real. So when you're acting yourself, you're a, you're allowing others to be other people around you or other people that are watching you to be real, to be themselves, to fulfill the purpose they they want to or how they feel, what faith they believe in, um, allow them to to carry this out. Um, so that's where it came from is in mm -hmm. Tupac always made it clear is like, I'm not going to be perfect every day. Some days I'm gonna have my good days. Some days I'm my bad days. But the only thing that makes it different is that I have a lot of cameras around me. But at the end of the day, I'm still human. Yeah. How, how do you yeah, handle I, that, man? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kamal. I was just going to say that's super dope. I, I, I think that, um, you, you know, when you think about artists or celebrities, the people who usually tend to connect with the world or the culture are the people who are being just authentically, unapologetically them. The people who, you know, you feel like you could hang out with and they would still act like the same person on camera or off camera. And, and I think, you know, something about the uniqueness that we were talking about earlier is, is when you are that authentic, real self, nobody can imitate that nobody there's not another you you know that that is your creative spin that you bring to the world it, it can't be duplicated just like your dna and so I, I think that's just such a powerful message because we want to see people act real that's why the whole notion of reality tv of you know all these behind the scenes cuts we, we want to see the real you even when it comes to us being sports fans i mean I was just watching, like I'm a huge Lakers fan. I was watching JaVel McGee's um, like vlog on what it's like to be inside the bubble right now. You know, what, it, what does that real life experience look like? You know, it's cool. And I, I definitely enjoy the edited and, you know, the professional photography and the videography. And like when you're all kind of like buttoned up and you look good for the cameras. But I also want to know the real you. Like if I'm this invested into the things that you're doing, the things you're creating, uh, the things that you're showing the world, I, I want to know the whole picture. So I, I think that's a, a really powerful message that, again, that you can't be duplicated when you are being authentic and your audience knows it, they can feel it. And obviously for you, Roger, they've connected with it. 
Thank you. You know what? I got to ask you about something that has come up in, I think, our last two live streams, and it's the it's the topic of cancel culture. And I and I think this this Tupac quote is so relevant because, like you said, what Pac was saying was, I don't, I'm not interested in building up an image of myself that makes me afraid to get canceled because I put myself on this unrealistic pedestal that I can't sustain because I presented myself to be a perfect person. I never laugh, I never joke around, I never curse, I never get angry, I, I, I never break a promise. And I think what a lot of people are experiencing right now is this fear that someone's gonna dig up you know, some tweet they wrote five years ago where they said something stupid or whatever it may be and then get canceled for it. I'm curious to know what, what's your take on cancel culture and, and what is your advice to people who who want to apply being a real model to the, the the fear that a lot of people are feeling right now about being canceled? Uh, the cancel culture for me is like if if you're living back in the past and then I, I'm no longer there. Yeah, he's like as we as human beings, we evolve and we change. And, and as an example, I, I prior to this where I'll tell you, I had a, I had a nose ring and the nose ring was because Tupac. But as like that phase kind of uh, went out, like I kind of grew up and kind of realized my situation's current. And a lot of people always wants to um, hold the past or hold an old tweet that no longer do you live or do they live there. So what are we bringing those things back? Um, you need uh, what we should look at is the difference at how you change, how you improve yourself. And that's where the key holds for us moving forward. It's not, um, I think the past is very important and teaches us a lot. But also you, you have to see the progress, the process in the journey. So trusting the process, they always tell us to trust, trust the process or trust your journey. Um, but we're always getting stuck on moments of those things. It's like, it's a process. We're still not done. We're evolving. We're still trying to move forward. I'm still going to, I'm going to get better. I learned from my past. I, I learned from who I was at eight, when I was 18 years old. That was 18 year old's mistake. Um, I'm human. You're human. So it was just, it, the cancel culture is, um, whether you're looking at me, at my, at, at my character, who I am today, or you're looking at the character of eight, when I was 18 years old, that I'm no longer there and we're no longer there. So what are we moving forward from? And, and I think the cancel culture is just one of those things is like, it's, it's digging, it's for, it's for the news um, ratings um, that unfortunately that's the society we live in, um, off of ratings and not off the realistic things we might be doing are positive things. Um, negative things gets more um, more viewing than the positive things. And and I understand, um, but that's why we got TK um, as a leading <laughs> force of um, showing that it is it's possible. You can lead through positivity and leading through um, a, a, of motivating others and um, still be able to catch eyes and be able to uh, be recognized in other people's eyes. Let's talk about ratings and, and, and all the reactionary headlines. This is a time where we're, we're all in our homes, where we're consuming everything online and watching a lot of news and getting into debates about different things. How do you stay motivated? How do you stay grounded in a positive perspective during a time where there's so much to be worried about, so much to be scared about, so much uncertainty, so much negativity, so much trauma, so much conflict and debate? What do you do personally to stay grounded in positivity? Reading is really, re reading has been really key to me um, in, in the whole process of, uh, you know, I mean, the, the quarantine and the uncertainty time, but also having the, um, the purpose and the foundation of um, how uh, I've come to be who I am today, um, understanding that um, with uncertainty, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's something that we can't control. So what we can do is control what we have today and understanding how we can react for tomorrow. So like for me, reading, um, you know, just documentaries, um, following um, people like the you, um, and just really um, trying to hang on to my purpose and in, in my in, in my foundation of uh, of what's evolving. Still, is it still a process that I, I'm I'm still not. Um, I think the perfect is the imperfect, um, and understanding that it's not going to be great every day. It's what uh, is it's what gives me hope. And, and as far as like, I'm trying. I'm I'm trying. You know, as as long as you put the effort in, 
Um, some days will come out with results, some days wouldn't, but understanding that this is the time we're living and embracing it and how can we move forward, I think is um, where I focus more onto it and, and what gives me hope um, as far as um, being able to now, I mean, the quarantine being stuck at home was for me, uh, it was good or bad because I'm, I'm kind of a social person, but then um, it gave me time to sit with myself, sit with my thoughts that at other times I wouldn't probably have wouldn't be able to just because of running around and, and being able to um, uh, um, host these um, canal squad gro groups, um, write about perspective words, but it, it allowed me to write and sit with my, uh, my, my, um, my mind, which I think a lot of people are scared of to sit with themselves and being curious, um, going a little further as we were speaking earlier. Um, I think the, the, the curiosity is what allowed me to, um, to, to really stay in, insane and in, in during this time is the curiosity of like, well, this is how it is right now, but was, what would it be maybe tomorrow? And, and how can I change tomorrow? How can I shape my tomorrow with my thoughts today of what we're, we're seeing in, in the world today? Roger, man, I, I wanted, you. dang TK, we got to get this man. Man, it's all good. This is real conversation. I just wanted to say I love hearing you philosophize, man. But you go right ahead, brother. Like, hey, you just said people want that real. They want that authentic, man. This is real. I was just going to say, Roger, what is, what, what is super interesting, and I, and I kind of want to hear you elaborate on, but I think a lot of people, what you said about there, people can get scared to sit with their thoughts. And I think it's intimidating. I know for myself, I, I do a lot of meditation um, up sometimes upwards of an hour, sometimes as short as 10 minutes. Um, but I think when I talk with friends, when I talk with colleagues, you know, they're like, how do you do that? What that, that seems so hard to just sit. Um, and I, I just want to hear you kind of riff on your experience. Uh, obviously, I think the values are pretty clear to a lot of people, but you know, how did you go about just sitting with your, with yourself? Like, how do you find the time, the patience, how do you can kind of control yourself and, and be disciplined and, and what do you get out of it? For me, I, um, I slow down things um, through writing. Um, so I'm always taking notes every day of my daily life, whether that um, might be, say, for example, I have an, a conversation with um, TK or, or someone else, uh, someone on, on the street. It's like I, I move from there and I take, uh, I take notes from it and then I'm able to reflect at night, either in the morning. Morning is one of my biggest um, pure moments. Um, when you wake up, you have zero thoughts. At least I do. I, I don't have much thoughts in the morning. So it's very pure. So the first thought that comes to my head um, is something I do write about and I re write down. And then I try to elaborate more what I meant or what the message or the thought that came to my mind and why it came to my mind and, and trying to figure out where did it come from, the curiosity of of understanding of either my background and my culture or why do I do these things that we normally don't ask these questions. So when I come up with a thought or this thought comes to my head, I ask the question why? And, and, and I try to elaborate and try, and that's, and that's in the sense of how I sit with myself is ask these questions um, real. It's, I stay real with myself. It's like, where, where is these thoughts coming from? Is it because how you was raised? Um, parents, um, you question everything. Um, even, you know, you, a lot of people that like, we question others, but question yourself. And I think that's what really gets to let you know who you are and what you want out of life. And it provides a little purpose. Of course, it's not going to be answers. Um, it's going to be an ongoing thing and understanding more, but it gets to, it gets to allow you to know a little bit more about yourself. So you know how to move in, in, throughout your life and throughout your day. Um, it's like, this is what I want. No, I don't want this. And, and, and sitting with myself, it, it required, uh, it, it all goes back to questions, um, taking notes. Um, I, I, I used to do, um, you said meditation. I used to do hot yoga. That was really great. Um, the heat kind of just calmed things down and really got me in tune with myself and my body. And, um, it's, it's, it's really been throughout different, throughout different times of my life. It's been, it's been different. So like in high school, it's been a lot of, um, uh, writing. Um, didn't, didn't really um, shared it with anyone or spoke it with anyone. And that can be in, in, in a sense, very harmful in, in the long run. So at, at, that's why I started putting it out to the world because you sitting with yourself can only do so much. You have to put it to the world because the world has answers mm -hmm. and can help and can lead. So um, 
you have to have that balance. You got to understand yourself and understand where you stand in life and where you stand in this world so you can provide more and share. I think, uh, I think ever since I started sharing, the key thing I always say, share, share, share. Although it's not going to be looking great or it's not going to be picture perfect, but sharing is going to help someone out there. It helped me at first. You know, it's just like, why not put it out there? My share, it might help someone else. And, and that's where the curiosity is like, just be curious. It's like, okay, just put it out there. You don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So it's like, at least I put it out there and, and with good heart. I think the good, where it comes from is very, you got to be very intentional in as far as like where it comes from. A lot of people might take a lot of messages um, the wrong way, but I know it's coming from a great, a great space. And, and, and going back to that cancel culture is like, I know where it's coming from. So I, it's like the unapologetic, unapologetical um, moments. Like you just, you just, you know, if you, if you, if you sit with yourself and understand a little bit more, you start understanding where it's coming from and, and, and the message and understanding how we gonna move. Hopefully I answer, I'm sorry. I, I, I speak a lot to elaborate just because I, sometimes the words just don't come to me. No, man, no. you did it, you did it, you did it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're on a roll right now, and I want to keep you on that roll. So, look, one of the things I did was I grabbed some screenshots of uh, some of the some of your daily writings that you put out on Instagram. Be a good chance for the audience to okay. just kind of get a glimpse of what your thoughts are like. And I like to read a couple and then just kind of have you riff on it. How about that? Sounds great. <laughs> let's do it. All right, let's let's pull up. Uh, all right, here's one. Uh, Perfection is the destruction of your day. Replace it with understanding and creativity I, I that message goes back to the um some days i write out my days depending on how it is and that um so i'll i gotta do so and so i gotta make sure i take out the trash those kind of things. but then other days what i've learned is like you hold on too tight to a grip and you start you know you don't start pushing the same weight so you gotta loosen up a little bit so being so perfect on your day and how it goes can be a a, a, a distract a distraction for you but also take the long way uh, the 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 path you didn't want to go to when you you wrote out the day if that makes sense i'm sorry so like yeah not holding on too grip um too too hard to your discipline of the day loosen it up a little bit understanding it's not you can't control the whole day but you can control mm -hmm. how you react to the day so replacing it with understanding and creativity is where that side of things of being able to allow yourself to let go when things don't go your route and really capturing that moment and understanding why it didn't go around. Sometimes you might not understand why it didn't, but being able to um, be creative and understanding allows you to move forward. Because if you hold on to it, it's going to be up here mental, mentally. It's going it's gonna, it's gonna, to it's gonna take a toll on you. And, and, and letting go sometimes is, is great. I love it. Let's go to the second one. In order to gain in life, you must be prepared to lose. Losing is not just part of the process. It is how you gain in life. That uh, I remember this one like yesterday. Um, that was an experience that um, it was a bad day for me <laughs> um, with not winning, obviously. <laughs> but it was one of those things is like I gained that experience. I gained what not to do. We don't too many times when you're winning, you don't understand what you're doing wrong. So you don't hit that. You don't really get to hit that that uh, limit button until a day goes bad for you or you're losing. When you're losing is then when you get that perspective, it's like what I shouldn't do and what I should do. But when you're always winning, you're not gonna see what's good or right. You only see that when it's incorrect or it's not going your way. And that's what it kind of like gives you a timeout. Losing allows you to give you that timeout and really reflect on what, what, what just occurred. And I think that's when you really gain in life, when you're able to step back and then go forward. But if you're always going forward, you're mis you're misguided. You don't know where you're going because you, you think you're doing it right the whole time. But when you lose, you're at, it allows you to understand like what I need to work on and what, what weakness and the strength that I do have. Roger, you said uh, that was a bad day for me. I remember it like it was yesterday, if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of people, when, when they see, uh, you know, positive things like this, they just kind of assume that the people who mm -hmm. put this kind of material out there are always kind of in this transcendent like you know buddha mind state <laughs> and uh and clearly you were in a, in a in a bad place when you when you wrote this D do you mind unpacking that a little bit telling us what, what what was going on in your day when you wrote this 
Yes. Uh, so on that day, I lost. Um, it was a great friend of mine. Um, really, one of my best friend. Um, just you know, what I mean, um, didn't work out. It was our our, our relationship as friends didn't align to what we wanted to go. Um, but I was holding on to really tight to our relationship just because I mean, a lot of times we put years in between what is realistic to our present. No longer did he align to where my path and where I was going. So understanding that, you know, I was like, I was heartbroken, you know, it's like, that's my brother. That's my great friend. We were supposed to do so-and-so in this life. We're supposed to, you know what I mean? He was going to be a godfather for my, you know what I mean? My future kids and stuff. It was just one of those things. It's like, you got to understand is like, um, probably when you're losing something is, is when you really, you're not, you're not losing, you're not losing. Um, it, it's like losing dead weight. You're able to get a little bit more lighter so you can gain to go further. And then that situation was a, a great friend of mine, the best friend of mine uh, since high school. It's just like it just didn't align no more. And uh, I, 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 we, all these messages come from experiences and perspective that we see in life, like our everyday life. So sometimes it's yeah. tough not to, not to get too too personal with these messages. So we always write it down and then we we strip it down and how we can um, not get it too too direct. Um, sometimes people reach out it's like. Is that a message about me? I was like, <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> you know, it was like maybe. I don't know. It was, it was like I, it was the thought today. It was just the thought today. It was the message today, and then that's why I think we continue to write and, and allow this perspective words to write every day. It's just like it's our everyday thought. Is you know we think every day, but a lot of time we just don't write these things down. We just let it go. Like it was just yesterday. It's just yeah. like yesterday has some some gems that will go help us today. In that case, it was a great friend of mine that, um, you know what I mean, no longer um, was in the same pathway as my life was going. Yeah, yeah. And and I, I know that that can be a very hard choice to make because it's it's so easy to be held hostage by history. You know, when when you have someone that's been a part of your history, you can feel this this sense of obligation. Well, you know. Man, we've been friends since third grade. I, I I gotta I gotta do a partnership with them, or I gotta do this project with them. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes that's not what's best for you. And 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 the the real kicker about it is if it's not what's best for you, it's not what's best for them, because the people in your life mm -hmm. are not gonna benefit at all if you treat them like you're doing them some kind of favor by keeping them around. It's like I don't want to be your friend because you feel guilty about dropping me i don't want to know right. that i'm in your life because even though you don't want me in your life it's just like an obligation you're fulfilling that's that's terrible for the other person and so making those tough decisions is actually good for everybody involved even though in the moment that feeling just sucks you know and i will make it clear that's why i started following you the way you word you like held host hostage I was like, that, that's TK right there being TK. And like, that's what I loved about it. It was like about your, uh, how you write. It was just, just your wording, how you place it. Uh, it it's, 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 it's genius. I appreciate it, brother. Well, you, you got the same thing going. I got, I got one more that I want to, <laughs> one more I want to talk to you about. I want to hear your thoughts. You say a key trait. This, this was one that made me really go, hmm. So I'm excited about this one. A key trait of a leader isn't how to act like one but it is understanding how to move like a soldier. This one was um, as referring to, you know I me mean, leading Canal Squad, for example, is like, as a leader, you stand in the front most of the times. You stand in the front and you have followers and they lead you and you lead forward. Um, but no, at that point, it's just one perspective. But when you're able to move with them next to you as a soldier or as a follower, you're able to understand these different pathways that we can go to improve the whole community. But if there's only one person looking forward, how do you only, you're only going one direction and you're, in most cases, it's for your self-interest. But when you're able to think like a soldier and think like um, the community and think and help others, is like, is where you really are leading everyone to, to the water, to, to food, not just yourself. It's like it goes back to like you can lead a, a blind man to water, or I forgot how it goes, um, um, or you can teach him how to fish, and it's one of those things. It goes, it goes to back like um, you can you can lead, but that can only go take you so far. But if you go with your community, you go with a group of people, you go further. And it's like 
uh, uh, I'm not successful until the people around me are successful with me too. It's like you get to the top, but then you're you're pulling people up, and that yeah. in a sense is pulling you back down. So if you can make it up, um, you can make it with more people. It's just it's a greater f- feeling, but also understanding and, and and what a true leadership is a leader. Yeah. Mm. Man, mm-hmm. I, I know that that when, when we talked offline, you've got another engagement you've got to get to, and I, I promise to get you off a little early. But uh, but as a as a kind of final thought, um, what's next for Roger, man? What 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 are you what are you what are you going after? What are you reaching for? Uh, what are you excited about creating in, in your future? So if I if I if I will be honest, I like Throughout Perspective Wars, never thought Perspective Wars would have been what Perspective Wars would is today. Canal Squad never thought, you know what I mean, that would have happened. Um, I, I live by curiosity and understanding a little bit more and, and pushing the envelope a little bit more. And that's how it has led me to creating these um, groups. Um, for me, the mental is very strong. So Perspective Wars is mental. Then Canal Squad is physical. So those two things for me are, has been, is, for me, has been always a great balance of who I am. Um, but also got me into doors that I normally wouldn't have entered. So through the Canal Squad is empowering others through movement. They're hoping it can leak into their everyday life. So it, 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 when if they understand they can do this movement, they can understand they can do a lot of more of the things. So it was really create, um, creating more purpose in, in, in these movements and under, allowing other people to understand they have it in them. They just are not curious enough. And then perspective words is like that logic of, of kind of like not the guidance of understanding a little bit more, but I see questioning a lot of, of what you think is true to be because society or your family or uh, where you live at tells you to be. So it is the, for me is being curious of or how I move forward, but also having a little um, helping others. I think that's what has led me to, to, to who I am today. And I think it's gonna help me move forward. I can't really answer the question what's next to me for me, but I can I know it's it's helping others and in, 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 in sharing the as much as I can while I'm still here. Um and, and I, I through that is how life unravels uh, unravels for me and allows me to to create beautiful things that I I, I, I have purpose and believe in. For people that want to follow your inspirational thoughts, people that want to keep up with your journey as it unfolds, people that want to support the work that you're doing, uh, tell us all the places that uh, that we can find you. So we got Canal Squad, which is at Canal Squad Indy, and that's what the um, the the more um, the fitness community um, that we we have here in Indianapolis, uh, which is growing, and I'm very grateful for what the direction is is. It's opening, the doors is opening, the direction is going. And then we have Perspective Words, which is at Perspective Words, um, is on IG. And it's just like daily perspective of how we're we're interacting with life every day. Um, yeah. um, and that has to do with the uncertainty that is occurring today. And then I got my personal one, which is uh, at Ro Ro Roger, that R O R O Roger, that underscore. And that one is more, um, that is just, me um that's just through that i put messages i also put photos um i do poems i i how i'm feeling today is what you'll see there <laughs> if you see how roger's feeling that day and, and and what's on his mind that that's where you'll find it no filter <laughs> I, I'm, wow. I, want, I want to be a real model <laughs> <laughs> that's the perfect wrap up my brother i absolutely love it man stay inspired and stay inspiring uh you're shining a bright light and uh during these uh so-called dark times it's it's, it's more needed than ever before um for everybody who's listening uh tune in next week tuesday at 12 p.m eastern time we'll be right back here with uh revolution of one live streams roger thank you for uh, hanging out with us today man it's been fun i appreciate you guys for the time thank you